Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call the Planning and Development Committee meeting to order and ask if any member of council has a declaration of pecuniary interest. They declare it now or at the appropriate time. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, a delegation. We have uh, Bruce Power, the Ad Adventure Passport Program, and I'd like to maybe have Kara. Could you make the introductions, please? Good morning. Thank you. Uh, every year we run the Adventure Passport, which all of you are very familiar with. And over the years, we're in the 12th year this year, and over the years, Bruce Power has been a big supporter of the program and, uh, and very supportive of us in moving people around uh, Bruce County and getting them out to our communities and investing in our communities. Over the years, we've had uh, a number of different stops, and we featured the Bruce Power Visitor Center as, as one of uh, our premier stops a number of times in the Adventure Passport. And again, uh, Bruce Power has been very generous with us and uh, very supportive of the program and its economic benefits to our community. So today I'd like to introduce Delina Williams from Bruce Power, and she is here to bring uh, a check to the County of Bruce for the amount of $5,000 that will go towards this year's uh, 2016's Adventure Passport. So we'd like to uh, invite her up and uh, do a picture with you as uh, the chair of the committee. Thank you. Again, thank you uh, very much uh, to Bruce Power uh, for your generous $5,000 donation. We certainly appreciate it. The uh, passport uh, program is very important to our county. It brings a lot of people in, and uh, it's an exciting uh, program. So we thank you very much. Thank you. We have uh, some action items, and I'll turn it over to uh, Chris to take us through those. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first one on the agenda is the uh, approval by the committee of a number of local amendments. And as you recall, um, there are some changes that affect uh, our social services department in terms of the act and the regulations. And uh, there was a number of, of local plans um, that we had in place that made reference to the old legislation and numbers of, of people who could be housed in child care. And the purpose of this is really an administrative amendment to bring all these um, um, local plans up to date. Uh, in order to facilitate uh, proper child care within the county. Um, so all of these would have had already uh, local amendments, uh, local uh, public meetings under the Planning Act at the local level, and the bylaws have been approved or about to be approved by the local um, councils. And so the proposed amendment is that um, all of those ones you see listed be approved by the committee and that the director be authorized to sign the decision sheets. Okay, thank you. Um, you see the uh, recommendation before you. I won't read it. Uh, it involves all of the municipalities that are, that are listed. And I need a mover and a seconder. Anne, seconded by. Milt, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Okay. Um, second report is in relation to the uh, Canadian Nuclear Association. And um, as you're aware, um, uh, we've had political representation attending the, the national conference over the last number of years. And so I was asked to look into uh, potential memberships um, within that organization. As you can see from the report, um, basically this organization is an advocacy group that advocates for all things nuclear um, within the country. Um, there's a number of different classes of membership and I should say that um, in our investigations, I don't know that they have any municipal members yet. In fact, we may be the first or nearly the first to um, look into this. 
Um, the memberships range from um, no cost at the very bottom to tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars based on the size of, of facilities and, and so on and so forth. Um, in discussions with their staff um, at the association, it seems that um, the uh, um, class six um, type membership uh, costs $2,500 um, per year. And with that, you get um, all of their updates um, in terms of uh, newsletters and also access to their, uh, their files they go through and, and review all newspaper articles that are relevant and related to nuclear and so on and publish those to the membership as well so we can find out the media um, perspective with regard to the nuclear industry um, within Canada. It was felt that um, because of uh, the fact that we wish to expand our economic development profile and start trying to have some impact on um, the spin-offs associated with the nuclear industry, um, now might be a time to formalize a membership within that um, group so we're aware of uh, research that's being done, trends and the types of advocacy that are being undertaken uh, at the federal level. So. Um, the $2,500 membership I mentioned, the types of, of, of things you would be getting, and those are outlined in the report. Um, everybody's familiar with the trade show, or the conference at the, held at, at the yearly, um, uh, on a yearly basis as well. Um, they run university education programs, high school education programs. Uh, they have general communication services, government relations, which w I would suspect would involve lobbying. Uh, policy and research division um, involved in regulatory, in regulatory affairs as well. So this type of membership um, provides access to um, all of those things, uh, provides a discount um, and registration to the conferences at that level. And um, it, it also provides um, access to the, we could potentially have a seat at the board. I'm, I'm not so sure the county would, would choose to, to do that, but that option is available um, should the opportunity um, arise. So after reviewing um, the types of memberships available and the cost, um, if uh, this council w would like to buy a membership, we'd recommend that it be a class six membership at $2,500 and this would be covered by um, uh, under our existing budget that we have for memberships. Hey, thank you, Chris. Um, we have a recommendation that the County of Bruce become a member of the Canadian Nuclear Association at the Class 6 level at a cost of $2,500. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Mike and Ann? Discussion? All in? Yes, Mike? No. Okay. A great idea, Chris. I think it's time that we get involved in this organization. There's lots of benefits to it, and I think as we go start to go down this path with, with economic development, there, there may be more opportunities to, with, with this group. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is carried. And we have uh, two information items. The first one, uh, RTO7, Digital Marketing Partnership. Yes, so this is um, a, uh, a partner fund we applied for with the RTO um, last year. And so I'm just going to ask Kara to go through it quickly and provide some of the highlights in terms of uh, the impacts of the, of the partnership. Sure, thank you. So this was a, a partnership project that we uh, p partnered with RTO7 on. So this resulted in a one-third contribution from the county and a two-thirds contribution from RTO7. Our contribution was $10,000. And so really the goal of this grant was to uh, increase awareness over our winter season, which is usually our season where we struggle the most to get sort of uh, engaged with potential tourists and uh, visitors to Bruce County. So the focus of the uh, seasonal campaign was one on winter activities in Bruce County and two was a very targeted pre-season motorcycle trip planning. So to get people when they're thinking about planning their trips over the winter to start thinking about Bruce County as the place to uh, have that trip. So the campaign ran from January 4th to March 21st. And uh, on the winter camp activities, it featured things like yurt camping, snowshoeing, our cross-country ski trails, birding, and of course the 400-meter skating loop that we have at uh, McGregor Point. 
Uh, we used a number of channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and then Google. Uh, as the channels for that, and I won't get into all the details of, uh, of the outcomes because um, they're listed there for council, but you can see that there's some very dramatic increases that we saw over what we had seen in previous years. On the preseason motorcycle trip planning, again, uh, it was a focus on folks from the GTA and Southwest Ontario and seeing if we could get them thinking about Bruce County to do their, uh, their trip planning as they're thinking about it over the winter months using very similar channels to the winter campaign. And again, there's some outcomes and impacts for council's information there. So really what we kind of learned from that, again, other than the general increase in numbers, what we try to do, it's often very hard to think how does this online component have an impact in our economy? And uh, we're getting a lot better at sort of trying to track that information. But really what we look at is how many impressions or how many times is, is, the, uh, is the website accessed. And we had hoped to generate uh, six million impressions with the Explore the Bruce website, and we were, or we did generate that many, and that was 1.2 million over what we had anticipated uh, with this campaign. And so what we start to see is that those, we call them clickouts. So it's when people access our website and then they click through to an operator's website. So that's really what we're trying to encourage. So we do the marketing and then we direct people to our operators and then the goal being that that translates into a sale for our operators. So the campaign resulted in more than a thousand of those clickouts to our operators website again where we have we believe that has a potential to relate to sales for them. So really we're, we're starting to partner with some of our, um, our operators as well to see if we can get a lot more targeted results data on that but right now that's sort of what we look at is how much traffic flows into Explore the Bruce and then how much flows out to our operators. So as I noted, it was a considerable increase over last year. Um, it was a great opportunity to partner with RTO7 and leverage our dollars. So again, one third to two thirds. And we're looking at how we can take some of the tactics that we learned from that and integrate it into our ongoing marketing that we're doing. So there's a summary. Okay, any questions uh, for Kara? Yes, Mitch. I might have messed it, but winter yurt camping, what is that again? So yurts are uh, outdoor, it's like glamping, so it's higher end camping, right? So in McGregor Point, and we have some up at the National Park as well. The National Park ones aren't open in the winter right now, but at McGregor Point, they're structures, so they're wood structures with a canvas over top, beds, fireplace, that sort of cooking facilities. Okay, any other questions? Paul, <clears throat> it was just very interesting on the on that motorcycle, uh, the trip planning. How involved are we? Like there were some brochures on some on some recommended routes and like a half day tour, or full day tours. There was. Did we uh, were we involved in, in designing some of the routes? My my point is, it was interesting that uh, happened to uh, talk to some. Uh, people on the bikes and the route the route that they went on that day uh, they weren't they weren't very pleased about that route uh, which is was critical of the road condition so and you know I, I'm not saying even what road I don't remember what road that was but they thought we need when they drove up here to uh, look forward to doing that route and then uh, where the route took them which is we, we would never take our bike back on that road again. So I don't know what was a gravel condition, but it had to do with a uh, poor road condition that we that we picked as a route, and they weren't they weren't overly pleased about that. Do, do we have any do we have any dealings in in designing those routes? Yeah. So through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah. The the motorcycle product that we have. Um, has been around for a number of years so we know we're very popular as a motorcycle destination from southwest and uh, so that product was developed a number of years ago and we've been going through over the last um, few months or so sort of a refresh of that so i'll be honest i don't drive a motorcycle but i'm pretty sure we weren't taking people on gravel routes but there may be we may need to take a closer look at sort of the road condition so i'll i'll note that and make sure that's part of our review as we undergo it Thank you, Gar Carla. Hey, Kara. <laughs> any uh, any other questions or discussion? Okay, we'll move on to the next item, the uh, information item, and its report about the Finlayson property. Chris. 
Uh, thank you. Um, we had a delegation last uh, month uh, from the Finleysons, and this is in relation to um, ongoing concerns um, that they have regarding the uh, rail trail, um, specifically in relation to motorized use, secondly in relation to uh, speed and dust. Um, as was provided in the previous uh, report, um, we've had a number of contacts with the Finleysons and additionally have undertaken work and repairs on the rail trail with our own staff and additionally working in conjunction with the local ATV club um, who is instrumental in terms of keeping the rail trail um, up and running. The um, solution um, that was provided previously to um, the Finleysons as a, as a potential fix would be to uh, regrade the rail trail and additionally apply a higher level of quality calcium chloride um, similar to the type that's applied to uh, township roads and municipal roads as a dust suppressant. Um, so in terms of um, further actions, uh, we're simply providing an information report that we, we feel that um, this is an operational type of matter that we need to pursue at a staff level in conjunction with the clubs. And we believe the next solution is, is apparent and we'll give it a try and see if that, um, see if that works. Um, in terms of the, the trail surface itself, I, I must say that when the initial um, uh, master plan was undertaken by the volunteer group, um, there is a, obviously a preferred standard for when the trail is fully developed. And there's been some sections of the trail where the, the trail bed has been leveled or flattened and uh, A-gravel has been applied and then on top of that is the stone dust. And the purpose of the A-gravel is really to maintain a high level of compaction so you're not doing a lot of repairs to it. Um, and then additionally, stone dust is thought to be a fairly decent multi-purpose um, type surface. Um, the stone dust, or often referred to as limestone screening, is, is dusty in and of itself and um, can additionally provide dust issues as well. So the application of, of limestone screenings at this point we don't believe would, would fix the problem and instead um, we plan to move forward to grade it and provide a higher level of calcium. Um, this is uh, the application of, of, of liquid calcium, I would say, exceeds our general standards of maintenance, um, but given the proximity of the house and the swimming pool to the um, rail trail, um, we would recommend that we move forward in, in that fashion. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions? All right. Uh, that was received for information as well. Our next meeting, June the 23rd, and I need a motion to adjourn. Robert?